In this lecture, we'll be looking at summation notation. This is just a shorthand form of writing sums. So if I've got numbers, say x1, x2, up to x10 here, this is just uh, describing numbers. So if I've got numbers, say 1, 2, 3, 7, I might call this one as x1. These are just, just symbols to represent the data, general data, x3 and x4. So if I want to add them all up, I write this in this way. So I've still got here the i just determines whether I've got x1 or x2 or x3. The i goes from 1 to n. So when i is equal to 1, I've got x1 in there. That gives me x1. When i is equal to 2, I've got x2. When i is equal to 3, I've got x3. And so on. And the symbol here, this little symbol here, means adding. So I've got plus, plus. And I keep adding this until I get to the last one, which is xn. So this is a shorthand way of writing the sum of numbers. And we read this as sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. i is the summation index. It controls what's being added up. And sigma here, the Greek letter, is called as the summation notation here. So an example over here, I've got... Sorry, before that, the i is a dummy variable. If I change the i to j here, for example, it's still the same sort of numbers. I've still got here, in this first part, I've got x1 plus x2 plus xn. The second one, when j is equal to 1, I've got x1. When j is equal to 2, I've got x2. So this is still the same sort of numbers. So don't confuse, be confused if I change the symbol over here, because it's this thing that determines what's going on here, the x. As an example, I've got the numbers x1 is equal to 1, x2 is 3, and so on. If I'm looking at the sum from 1 to 6 of xi, that is x1 plus x2 up till x6. If I add the numbers, I'm going to get 1 plus 3 minus 1 plus 4 plus 0 minus 2. So x1 is 1, that's my first number. x2 is 3, that's my second number x3 is negative 1, that's my third number, x4 is 4, x5 is 0, and then x6 is negative 2. So if I add all this up here, then the ones cancel off, and I get 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. If I look at the second example, the second part here, i equals 1 to 4 of xi. So instead of going all the way to 6, I'm stopping at 4, so this is only going to be x1 plus x2, plus x3, plus x4. So this will be my first four numbers. 1, plus 3, minus 1, plus 4, and that comes to 7. If I'm looking at the squares of the numbers, so all that happens here is now, before I add the numbers, I square them, so I'll just go to the slide to look at the numbers here. So here, that means I will have 1 squared plus 3 squared. Be careful, there's a negative 1 there, so it's a negative 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 0 squared. And again, be careful, it's negative 2 squared. Negative squared become positive. So in this case, I'm going to get 1 plus 9, plus 1, plus 16, plus 0, plus 4. That gives me 31. In D, I've got xi plus 4, the bracket over here, means I add 4 each time to the number before I perform the sum, so I'm going to have 1 plus 4, and then 3 plus 4, And negative 1 plus 4, 4 plus 4, 0 plus 4, and finally negative 2 plus 4. So here, if I perform the sum, what I'm going to get is 29. This other form looks the similar. This one here looks similar to the previous one, but it's different. 
Here I'm adding 4 each time because of the bracket, and here I'm adding 4 only once. So this is going to be essentially, if I look at this part over here, previously for that I had I had got 5, and I'm just adding 4 to that, and I'm getting 9 out of that. So this part is the most difficult part you will see in maybe the whole course, this summation notation, because it's new to most of you. This is just notation in mathematics, shorthand forms of writing things. Some rules for summations, and we'll look at this briefly. If I'm just adding a constant each time, and I'm doing it n times, I'll get nc. So if I'm just adding, say, 1 plus 1 plus 1, and I do that, say, 10 times, I'll do this 10 times 1. That's what this is saying. If I multiply a constant first before I add them up, it's the same as adding the numbers and then times the constant. So I'm going to say 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3. I can factorize the 2 outside. And then I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 and then multiply them. So I'm adding the numbers first and then times in the 2. If I've got two sets of numbers in the middle to add them up, I can surely break them up here. So add all the x's first, all the y's second, and so this is the first part, all the x's, all the y's, and then I just add those together. And the same thing happens with the minus in the middle. Instead of subtracting the numbers first, I do the sums for the x's, the sums for the y's, and then subtract them. Proofs of these uh, I'll leave for you to look at afterwards. You can ask your tutors and tutes if you wish. I'll leave the proofs out here. If it you follow it, it's fine. Otherwise, you can ask for them in lectures or in tutes afterwards. Example over here, if I've got sum of x i is 45 and the sum of y i is 30, all from 1 to 10, then the sum of x i plus y i is here is the rule tells me I look at the x i first, then the y i, so that's going to be 45 plus 30, which is 75. With 3 and a 4 in the middle, and a minus in the middle, if I break it up using my rules, then I look at this part first, and the 3 is a constant, so it comes outside. The minus sign goes in the middle, and then I look at this part next, the 4 is a constant, comes outside. So I do the sums for the x-i's, and the sum for the y-i's, and the 3 and the 4 come in the middle as there. So it's 3 times, the sum of the x-i's is 45, minus 4 times, the sum of the y-i's is 30. So 3 times 45 is going to be 135, minus 120, that comes to 15. So have a good look at this and make sure you follow it. Again, ask questions in lectures afterwards or in tutes. This looks a bit more horrible, but all I'm doing is making it look hard. So here, the first thing is, I've got the plus 4 there, and so I can, and the 2xi plus 4, I can break this up. So first of all, look at the 2xi's, there it is, 2xi's. And then look at the sum of the 4's, that's separate. In the bottom here, again I've got the yi minus 2 here, so look at the yi's first, and the sum of the 2's, and the square goes afterwards. Then the first one here, the 2 comes outside, and I get the sum of x size. And then the sum of 1 to 10 of 4, my rule says is just 10 times 4. This one here again breaks up. The sum of the y i's here, I was given as earlier. The sum of the y i's was 30. So this is just 30. And if I add 2, 10 times, so I get 20, so this is a square there, so I square this. If I put all the numbers together here, the sum of x size was 45, so this is 2 times 45, plus 40, and this is 10 squared is 100. That's 90, uh, and uh, plus 40 is 130 over 100, and that's 13 over 10. So this may look a bit complicated. We won't do too many of these kinds of things. This is just for practice to make sure you understand some of the ideas behind it. Again, ask in tutes or lectures afterwards. Some notes over here. Uh, if I'm looking at xi times yi, that's different. There are no rules for this kind of thing. Certainly what I need to do is take a look at each number here, xi and y, and multiply them together and then add them up. Certainly, it isn't the same as adding the x's and adding the y's, and then multiplying. It doesn't work like that. So clearly, if I've got something like 
in this case uh, it's clear to see if I'm if I'm multiplying numbers and then adding them up it's not the same as adding multiplication if I put 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 that gives me 2 plus 6 and that's 8 but if I do it as separately as adding these up first 1 plus 2 and then adding these ones next 2 plus 3 this is going to be 3 times 5 and that's 15 so they're very, very different indeed again you might see some of these things occasionally but not very often and I'll leave this one out you can have a think about this yourself and that's it for summation notation we'll use those ideas afterwards in sample means and we'll see that in the next short lecture thank you